Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another edition of Research Fantasy Presents the NBA Fantasy Baller. I'm Nick Valinchak. For those of you who don't know me, I go by Nick from CWE on all of your favorite fantasy platforms, and I'm here to give you my three favorite tournament plays for Thursday, March 30th, 2017. <clears throat> Last night was a bit of a mixed bag. I hate when I have to say that, but that's the nature of the sport, especially as we are winding down in the season. We had Dennis Schroeder, who was about as bad as a basketball player could be against the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, if he played in the other three quarters, like he played in the fourth quarter, we would have been much, much, much happier. But instead, he wanted to focus on turning the ball over a copious amount of times in those first three quarters. Rudy Gobert, very good statistical game. Fantasy game, the price just got past him, and it's just an evidence that if he's not getting three to four blocks a game, that his ceiling is very much muted. Again, 33-ish fantasy points. Um, like I said, a good statistical game. If you look at this box score, he did very well. Didn't have you know an abundance of turnovers, but he just didn't get those peripheral stats that we're used to. Uh, but our diamond in the rough for sure was Isaiah Thomas, who killed value at his price, going over 50 fantasy points for something, I think, around six and a half times value on FanDuel. So we will hope to hit more of those plays tonight. Small five-game slate, but it's playable. Let's start things off with Damian Lillard, 16-9 fantasy draft, 9,300. FanDuel, 9,200 on DraftKings. I'm very interested to see how things break down tonight um, ownership wise <coughs> at the point guard position because presuming the Clippers play their starters Chris Paul has a better matchup at a lesser price Ricky Rubio obviously has a much better matchup at less of a price Tyler Eulis is getting every minute that he can Ish Smith may be the only point guard going up against an easy Brooklyn team so, moral of this story is we just have a situation here where we have a bunch of point guards in lower positions than Damian Lillard, which I'm hoping will cause his ownership to drop tonight. So, why am I on Damian Lillard? Well, and I know that some people are going to say, Houston Rockets, Patrick Beverly defense, no. And I just think that's about as foolish as it gets. Could Damian Lillard have a bad game here? Absolutely. There's no question about it. But the, the, if we're really thinking that Patrick Beverly's defense is going to shut down um, Damian Lillard, I think we're mistaken. Lillard is on fire in the month of March. He can do no wrong. He's putting up 40-point games left and right. And while his upside might be on paper a little bit less than in some previous matchups. I would contend that it should be more. I haven't gotten to look at the Vegas numbers yet, but this game is being played in Portland. I'm assuming it's going to have the highest point total, and I'm assuming the spread's going to be close as well. The Trailblazers are fighting for that eighth seed in the playoffs, so I'm expecting Lillard to come out with a really big outing tonight. I'm targeting the 50-point mark. Next up, we have... DeAndre Jordan, center of the Los Angeles Clippers going up the, against the Phoenix Suns. 12-9 fantasy draft, 7,900 fan duel, 6,900 draft kings. This is just one of those plays where as long as he is going to be in this game tonight, at 6,900 especially on draft kings, there's no looking past him because he's been hitting value like crazy. The Suns are absolutely horrible in every defensive measure of the game. He should easily be able to out-rebound anybody on the floor. So a first quarter double-double might not be out of the question tonight. Um, and more importantly than all of that, this is one of those keeping up with the Joneses type situations where everybody's going to have ownership. He was 17% last night on a 10-game slate. I would not be shocked to see him at 35 or 40% tonight, especially seeing as Joseph Nurkic is no longer underpriced compared to him. He's up near 7,500. I think that he's a great option and he could pay off once again this evening. I'm going to wrap things up with another point guard who could go overlooked tonight. 
And that's Kyrie Irving of the Cleveland Cavaliers, who will be facing off with the Chicago Bulls. Number one, Kyrie had his worst game in like a year and a couple months. I mean, I think it was somewhere in January or February of 2016, the last time he played that poorly as he did Monday against the San Antonio Spurs. Maybe it was Tuesday. I can't quite remember. But... The Chicago point guard matchup has been one that we have targeted. Rondo, not the defender we were once used to. The Cavs fighting for that top position, one would assume. Uh, I don't see why Tyron Liu would want to just cede the position of home field, home court advantage throughout the playoffs at this point in the year. I expect the Cavs to come out fighting, and 7,900 is too low. Kyrie is seeing some of the highest usage that he's seen in the last several months during the month of March. Granted, a lot of that month did see Kevin Love out, but I think he's a guy who some people will be off to because of that recency bias. I'm willing to jump back in, even though I was heavily burned by Kyrie Irving on Monday or Tuesday night, and he makes my final tournament play of the day once again our top three tournament plays are damian lillard deandre jordan kyrie irving thank you for joining us i didn't cough one time make sure to subscribe to our youtube channel below head over to researchfantasy.com sign up for our nba mailing list head over to facebook like us there follow us on twitter at research and win and we'll see you again tomorrow